If you've ever had a sore elbow or a tweaky shoulder, you need to watch this video to the end because we're talking about training antagonists. This isn't just about injury prevention, it's also about increasing your performance. I have Maddie Cape with us today to talk us through antagonist training. So the first big question for us is what is antagonist training? So when we complete a movement, we have an agonist muscle and an antagonist muscle. And the agonist is what we refer to as the main mover and the antagonist is the opposing muscle in that movement. So in climbing, we do a lot of pulling. So our Agonist muscles are our main movers in pulling, and that is our biceps and our lats. So when we talk about antagonist training in climbing, we're generally referring to our pushing muscles, so our chest and our triceps. So antagonist training is when we look to incorporate exercises that specifically target these muscles off the wall to support our climbing. Okay, so why do we need to train our antagonist muscles if they're not the main movers in our sport? One of the main reasons we want to train our antagonists is injury prevention. Our muscles and our bodies work as a whole system. So if we become really imbalanced and really dominant on one of our muscles, say our pulling muscles, then we can um, open ourselves up to injuries. With this, it would often be around the shoulders or the elbows. Beyond injury prevention, this can actually be really good training for our climbing performance. Climbing is not just basic pulling. We know that it doesn't just look like completing endless pull-ups. So when it comes to more complex movements and moving through a variety of positions, actually our pushing muscles often get involved. If you are experiencing a plateau in either your pulling strength or your climbing, incorporating antagonist training could be a great way to push past this. Okay, so Maddie is gonna take us through three different methods for training your antagonists. The first one, we're gonna look at some basic bodyweight exercises. Then we're gonna look at using free weights and finally looking at suspension training. So a TRX or gymnastic rings. So the first exercise we're gonna look at is the push-up. This is a body weight exercise and it's really great because it requires no facilities whatsoever. So this can be done anywhere. Push-ups primarily target the chest, shoulders and triceps, but we recommend using a narrow hand position to target the triceps more. When it comes to form, you want to think about keeping your elbows tight to your side throughout that whole range of movement. You also want to keep your core engaged so that your pelvis is not tipping and you are not arching your back. It's important to work for a full range of motion to get the most out of your press-ups. So when you lower down in control, you want your nose to come close to the ground. Although a press-up is simply a body weight exercise, there are ways in which we can change the intensity to make it right for us. In order to do this, we want to change the angle of our body. So we could either do a press up against a wall, so we're at a higher angle, or we could do it on the floor. If you are on the floor, you can also put your knees down. If the standard form of a press up is too lower intensity for you, you can also raise one leg. This means that you'll be working your core harder because there's an element of instability. Because the press up is a body weight exercise, it's quite hard to be very prescriptive with the intensity. So in this exercise, we're gonna give you quite a large range of repetitions. Somewhere between five and up to 12 is a good starting point. If you can't do five press ups in the given form, try the regressions, which we have just shown you. If you're doing more than 12 at the hardest progression, it would be good to start thinking about using free weights to increase the intensity. Traditional bench press would be your go-to exercise for all this. You're gonna to wanna to perform four sets with roughly two to three minutes rest in between each set. The next exercise we're gonna look at is the shoulder press. Given that climbing is overhead pulling, overhead pressing could be one of the best antagonist exercises you could do. Shoulder press requires either dumbbells or a barbell. So although it's not as easy on facilities, these weights make it really easy 
to overload the muscles and monitor your progress. In this video, we're gonna focus on dumbbells. And this is simply because barbells start at around 20 kilos, and this is quite a heavy weight to be introduced into the overhead press. A dumbbell overhead press can be performed either seated or standing. In both cases, you want to keep your core engaged and press smoothly throughout a full range of motion. This means fully straightening at the elbow and imagining pushing the ceiling away from you. If you are completing this exercise standing up, you want to ensure that you don't use other parts of your body to assist the push, such as your lower body. This is an exercise in itself, but if you're wanting to target the antagonist muscles, we feel like a strict push press is a good place to start. Given that this exercise is using dumbbells, there's two options. You could either do one arm at a time or both arms at a time. Using one arm can be useful if you have limited weights available to you, such that you only have one dumbbell of the weight you want to use. For a good strength stimulus in this shoulder press exercise, we're gonna be using a rep range of six to eight reps. You want to choose a weight, which means that final rep is really hard to complete. Again, we're gonna be doing this exercise for four sets, resting roughly two to three minutes between each set. The final exercise we're gonna look at is a suspension exercise. So this is using either a TRX or gymnastics rings. TRX exercises are really good for working on stability and working more extended positions that really help support compression strength. When using a TRX, it can be really easy to adjust the difficulty as you progress, as you can simply move your feet relative to the connection point of the TRX, such that the angle of your body changes. When using the TRX, it is really important to keep your core stable, such that your whole chain from your hands to your feet remains engaged throughout the whole movement. Keep the movements smooth and controlled, and you should be able to hold a pause in the end position before moving back up to the starting point. A really great exercise to start with on the TRX is a prone T. When you complete this movement, it can be good to keep a very slight bend in your elbow. The starting position for the prone T has your palms facing forwards, and then as you lower your chest, forwards, you take your arms directly out to your side. The finished position will have your palms facing directly forwards and you should aim to end with your arms slightly in front of your chest. You don't want to go so far such that your arms move behind your body and you also don't want to allow rotation either inwards or outwards. Because using the TRX is quite a learned skill, it can be really useful to video yourself completing the exercise so that you can check your form. As Maddie said, this exercise can be quite complex in that it uses a lot of stability and engagement from the rest of the body. So we're going to start off a slightly higher rep range of going to 10 reps. This is gonna help you learn the skill by performing more repetitions. If you can perform all 10 reps with really great form, simply make the exercise less intense. Because of the stability and the core engagement involved, we're also gonna use slightly less sets. So we're going for three sets in this exercise, again, with roughly two to three minutes rest in between. Antagonist chaining, as we said earlier, is really gonna improve your longevity and performance in climbing. So it's important you find time each year to do these exercises. The ideal time to focus on your antagonistic training is in your off season or your base season, when you're not really focusing on performing or sending really hard. In a similar fashion to many strength and conditioning exercises, as we approach our performance season, we might look to increase the intensity, particularly in the muscles around the chest and shoulders, which are gonna be included in any compression style climbing. In our peak season, however, antagonistic training might be one of those exercises that we actually look to drop out of our training program to save energy for our most specific training. During a performance phase or in your peak season, your antagonistic training is likely one of those exercises which is first gonna be removed from your training program. This is gonna help you save your energy for your performance. As we've mentioned in the other fundamental series videos with conditioning exercises, we're gonna be saving these exercises for the end of our training session. 
after any of our very climbing specific work, specifically the stuff you're doing on the wall. This has been part of our fundamental series in which we covered antagonistic training. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.